education and real world knowledge about the voiceover industry. It's the Voiceover Gurus Podcast. <laughs> I have started the podcast. Welcome back to the Voiceover Gurus Podcast. And we're already having a good time. I, I think we're we're, yeah. we're enjoying ourselves. We're not on camera today, so we can be a little freer. Maybe, I don't know. We will discuss all of that because... I'm free um, whether I'm on camera or not. Right, definitely. But, I still, but it costs, it's cost something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, you've been gardening, so uh, you're... Yeah, I, was, I was taming the jungle out there. Actually, is what I, right. It's so you weren't in the mood to be on 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 camera. Yeah, today. I'm, I've got p- pieces of a shrubbery <laughs> in my hair <laughs> and in my eyebrows, so I'm not sure how I would come across. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so excited you were able to join me. Um, me this, l- for ladies and gentlemen, me. ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Hall who is a master at uh, not only voiceover and a fantastic voice actress, but also is a master of improv for voice actors online. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Love that. And um, wanted to have you on because very exciting because in June, you're actually going to be hosting uh, one of our workouts uh, where it's going to be just a fun time for about 90 minutes yeah. uh, to really explore improv. So we'll talk all about that. Yes. Um, and first off, how, how are things happening with you in the voiceover world? How's things in Good. regards to that? Good. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's always funny. I was just talking to somebody about this. In the beginning of the year, I always go through my, it's after the holidays now. Come on, let's kick into action. And it always right. takes till the mid of Jan- middle of January for things to really kick off. And then I've just been rocking since then. I turned around, and it's like the end of April. And I said, what? That's How did awesome. Months go by. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's always yeah. a good problem to have. It is. I tell you, it is. And uh, I've uh, been really enjoying teaching my improv 101 course which just finished in april and i have a second one coming up in the fall i do it twice a year now and Uh it's super fun to see people get over hurdles that they weren't sure how to get over before so that's Mm. that's really you know they they want to expand their comfort zone and they're not sure how and they put a toe in and then they like oh i like this temperature and they jump in you know Right. It's, that's all it takes really is trusting yourself. So I really get a lot of, I've started mentoring some people this year, casually, nothing formal. Mm-hmm. And I'm just enjoying being, you know, I never feel like I'm at the top of my game because I always feel like there's something new I can learn. So I'm just right. enjoying where I am in this space right now. Somebody recently told me that I asked to get coaching from, um, <laughs> the, the answer was, uh, no, you don't need, you should be on my team helping to coach. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I thought, wow, great. Well, my last yeah. coach from two years ago didn't think that, but fine. I'm happy. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so you do this, uh, the coaching for the VO, you do this class. Is it over the span of a few days or a few sessions or? It's over the VO span one? of two hours over three different weeks. So we meet three times. For two mm-hmm. hours, and it is wonderful because it's uh, it's VO Improv One Hundred and One. So essentially, you know, people who already know VO, you know, I don't teach voiceover. Right. I don't get into all that and script. I expect people to come and I and I check people out. You know, I vet them before they can take the class to make sure they've had something going on for at least six mm-hmm. months, so Smart. they know how to use the mic. They, <laughs> you know, they, right. they're doing auditions. And they have an understanding to some degree of script breakdown and script interpretation. Um, Right. Because that is the stage, the the place, the foundation that you need. Because if you take improv too soon, if, you know, as a voice actor, I'm not talking about in-person improv, acting improv, that's different. Mm -hmm. If you take VO improv too soon, it will just mess with your mind because you're confused still about other basics. So you yeah. just need to do that to yourself. You need to learn the basics first. At least you that's have to have that my foundation. philosophy is. So yeah, uh, yeah we, we go in and we do two hours and we learn the basics of improv, the mantra, yes, and, and what that all means, and then how to apply it to a voiceover script. And uh, that's cool. my little secret sauce that I've, you know, kind of 
cultivated after all these years? No, no, no. The sauce gets reduced, darling. It's Julia would say. You reduce that down to the essence and the wonderful flavor. The only things that matter, indeed. I get it. Now, so let's discuss how, because a lot of people are familiar with in-person improv. Um, You know, I do the games here at the studio, very informal, very informal. That's Um, improv, informal. What's yeah. formal improv? Well, honestly, you know what? The stuff I used to do in the city, they yeah. made it pretty formal and I hated it. Well, those are just, you know, uh, attitude <laughs> improv. Yeah. <laughs> it was like all you had to follow all these rules. And I just felt like it yeah. really messed with my feeling of creativity. Yeah. And fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I felt like it? I had to. I was constantly thinking, well, I can't say this and I can't say that and I can't go this way or that way. Those are soldiers of improv. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Encampments of improv. (laughs) It it literally like put a really bad feeling inside of me that I thought if I'm ever going to host something, I want the opposite. I just want to have fun, have games and and help people come out of their shell. But my curiosity is how do you make that work online? Yeah, well... You know, the funniest thing is that was the first question a lot of people that I invited to come with me 10 years ago when I started this in July of 2013. Um, (laughs) Yeah, they were like, what? I'm an improviser and I do this in person. I don't get it. And I'm like, well, I've figured it out. So come play with me. And I've uh, convinced some people and some people are just stalwarts. It's in person or it's nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Old school. The difference is two things. Um. You know, when we I do workouts, too, and I think that on a regular practice basis, doing it, first of all, in front of the mic. OK, you're doing this mm-hmm. from your space. So it's got to be online because we can't connect otherwise. So right. it started online 10 years ago before it was cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and when everyone was skeptical of me. So, um, yeah, we started online and we started on Skype and now we're on Zoom. But whatever. We never used video. Um we never use video in the workouts because... Oh, interesting. Our, yeah. Our focus is improvising with audio only because ah. that's generally what you're doing when you're in a session. And nowadays, there are more and more sessions that I'm taking that are including video just so people can see you and talk to you and see right. you work. like it's an in-person, the old fashioned when you drove to a studio, like I started in that time period when you still drove to studios and... Mm-hmm. He directed you from behind the glass. You know what I mean? Yeah, you had um, eyes on you the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And so um, nowadays, nobody hardly does that, although it does happen in Hollywood and maybe in New York, Chicago. I don't, you know, I don't go there anymore. So this to me was a way to get that feeling of play in the booth. Mm-hmm. And get rid of that stress. So that that whole experience you were talking about in improv, in a classroom, formal school, um, a lot of them are known for doing that and trying to, it's sort of like a boot camp for, you know, years um, long, like they levels, you know, that they go through. Um, Yeah. It's camp and it's really like soldiers. And if you're not getting it, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. And Mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a soldier military mentality. But I think the juice of improv is really about the freedom and the play. And when we are adults, do they have playgrounds for adults? Yeah, I guess casinos or whatever. But right. you know, you're not supposed to play so much, you know, especially in business. You're not supposed to be playing. But right. as actors, you're supposed to be pretending, which mm-hmm. is very much like playing. <laughs> totally. So the idea was based on that. The idea was let's be actors in front of a microphone and let's play and improvise. And then once a week in our workouts and through the class, I express how to do this, uh, play with a script. And essentially when you're thinking about improv and you would know this, you usually have seen partners. You're not improvising by yourself solo. That's a comedy, you know, stand right. comedy. Mm-hmm. So, and that's not even improvised usually not completely. It's right. Really thought through. Um, So when you're improvising, though, you usually have one or more scene partners that are in the Mm -hmm. scene with you. So Mm -hmm. my my theory is, um, and it's easy to practice and put it into experience, is the script is your scene partner. And so Hmm. 
you can imagine it like this, like you look at the script and you're usually looking it online or in paper and it's right. a white piece of paper with black text on there. And you have every room where there's white space to play between the lines. Oh, and wow. You start playing with that idea like, OK, so I can say these words, but I can be thinking lots of different things and improvising your scene while using those words is how we play when we're playing with scripts but on a regular basic i mean on a regular basis playing and doing improv in regular improv scenes in audio only in front of your mic just helps you get that juice in the room and do it with audio only so your focus is really on how they're hearing you ah. you know mm -hmm. so you tie it to you know, and you might be doing, you know, uh, exertions or you might be quietly trying. To... Yeah, you're definitely less uh, self-conscious than if the eyes are not on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, then you yeah, can you're let not go. dealing with an audience in the same way and you won't be in a session either. So one of the things that I like to tell people and I, I like to help people who are afraid, probably because I can help them get over that fear usually mm -hmm. of people, you know, people can be terrified of doing improv because they oh, feel God, like yeah. they're supposed to be super funny. They're supposed to be right. um, fast on their feet. And they're looking at people like from that TV show, whose line is it anyway, or right. some other show where they're doing improv, like that old British show. Um, there are lots of them. And those movies with uh, Oh God, I can see his face. Um, whatever. Um, they're, co right. they're comparing themselves to the moment that they're in when they're terrified and have no experience and no training and thinking that they have to be as good as, you know, a Hollywood celebrity. Jo right. Uh, Cleese, John Cleese. That's who I was uh -huh. thinking of. So you can't be. You're just not going to. Mm -hmm. Did you ride your bike that way? Did you like start right. a superstar, you know, cross cr cross bike, whatever they're called, motocross, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Oh, these are didn't. these these you are the misconceptions training wheels you know my first mm -hmm. class originally when i first started teaching a class was called training wheels because it's basically i remember that yeah mm -hmm. the, the idea is you got to get started somewhere so we're going to just put that fear over in that corner and you just let it stay there and you just tell it to shut up for a little while and we're going to fly <laughs> like little kids in the sand right see that's, that's what that's i love first step you know yeah. you got to go and you got to feel like i can goof off and be a dork or I yeah. can be an asshole, you know, in a way, you know, however your tape is playing on the inside when you're criticizing yourself, because that's what's causing the fear. You are going to just put that voice down, do your best to keep it in the background or away in the next room or far away in the next country and mm -hmm. play like a little kid again and find right. that feeling. And for some people, it happens really in a snap. Boom. And for yeah. other people, it takes more time, which is great, because as long as you're progressing, that's the important thing. And pushing that little comfort level out further so that you feel you start feeling really comfortable with doing all kinds of whack out, whacked out, funny, silly things and saying funny things and pretending silly scenes. And mm -hmm. then when you're in a session with a real client, you can entertain them by just You'll being feel more comfortable. Thing. You're mm -hmm. so much more comfortable. And you're not married to something you're already prepared with. That's super right. important. The yeah. flexibility of letting go of your ideas. And that's what improv teaches you, too, because you're dealing with other people who have different ideas, just like in a session. And you need to s change what you came into because they've done something different that you didn't expect. So now you have to modify in the moment. Exactly. So do you think that the June 13th workout is going to be no cameras? We're going to be just be doing it audio? It depends on the, the group, but it sure would be fun. I you think know? it would be good. Yeah, it yeah. would be great. Yeah, because um, as long as they're joining from a working space where they would record, mm -hmm. let them. Yeah, let them do that. Um, we could even start on video. What I do in the class is we start on video and then we start working towards going into audio only. So we could do some intros. Oh, yeah, that would be that great. See each other and stuff like that. And then it's like, video off. Let's goof around. One of yeah. the guys, I hire people to run the workouts. And um, one of the guys had been one of the leaders for a while, called it Improv in the Dark. Because that's how he <laughs> related to audio only. Because he had done that in his yeah. in-person improv. They had done Improv in the Dark. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I don't think there was any groping involved. <laughs> but still. I, I wasn't there. <laughs> Um, we had a few weeks ago on the podcast, a gentleman who actually owns, um, it's Green Light Improv, and it's out in uh, Columbus, Ohio. So he has a company, and it's for corporations, really. Yeah. And they basically set themselves up, they get hired, but they'll do 100 to 200 people in a session yeah. uh, with wow. these breakout groups and right. in an auditorium or whatever, because... Right you know, to help them with team building, with expression, right. with, and then, you know, some interesting stuff he brought up is that people are taking the improv home with them and using it in their relationships to better their relationships. Yeah. Um, and so it's fascinating that it isn't all about, you know, I got to be funny and I got to say this and I got to be quick on my feet. You know, it, it yeah. can incorporate, it can help benefit a lot of different aspects of your life. I've read a lot of articles in the last 10 years since I got really focused on this and trying to help people understand its value, mm -hmm. talking about how it's good for your brain, how it literally can help you not, obviously, every person's different. <laughs> this is not any guarantee <laughs> of uh, no dementia in your future, sorry, can't help <laughs> you with that, but it can help you create new pathways for your, your, I think it's the synapses that connect, they find different neural pathways to go to the right ones and um, share information. So everything that you do to learn a new skill is really beneficial. And improv creates a sense of um, euphoria. You laugh, you, you feel relaxed. Usually, mm -hmm. I mean, in the beginning, you might feel a little nervous and tense um, because it's so new and doing something new. That's a natural feeling to feel strange. So you right. have to just give yourself a break. And then people take it home because they have a lot of fun and they thought, well, maybe this is a way I can just, you know, play with the family, play with the kids and, and practice this on my own in a way, yeah. you know? I tell students that are having a tough time letting go. I asked them, I said, when you're on your own, do you make funny voices? Do you just act like a goofball? Do you imitate? <laughs> or in the and shower. some people, are, yeah. And some people are like, uh, no. And I'm like, well, you need to start. You yeah. know, you need to just have fun. I mean, yeah. you have a dog, give the dog a voice. Right. You know, it's just let yourself go. And the more you do it on the regular basis, the easier it is to access, you know, when you need it, like you're saying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we're um, working that muscle, you know, working out that muscle. Yeah. And and if you're worried, I remember before I always wanted to do different character voices and I just was frightened because I thought I would do something wrong. And that's, ah. you know, just based on psychology of an individual, me. Right. Um, so it took me a while. And then I started playing around with things. And so this idea of like, if you have a dog or a cat or a pet of some sort um, and giving it a, a voice, you could just talk in your normal voice, but pretend that that's it, it's responding to you. You know, like ah. you could just have a two two voice conversation. You could just talk to your dog. And so what do you think of that? You know, Luna, that's that's my dog's name. Right. <laughs> Luna was Oh, yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. I, I really don't <laughs> like the canned food anymore. Can I have some fresh meat, please? You know, you don't have to make a voice up. You can just True. start by trying to have a two person conversation in your head or out loud. <laughs> oh, but it's so much fun to make the voice. It's so much fun to make to the make voice. The but fun. some people are scared even of that. I at know. First. They really I try are. I tell people, you cannot do anything wrong. This is no. you. This is your interpretation of something. This is your thought process. It's not like we're sitting there, you know, going to yell at you and go, no, you didn't do that the right way. No, right. No, there is no right way. In fact, um, it's funny. Uh, if you hold up a pen in front of you, like I am right now, you can't see me, but I'm holding up a pen here. Mm -hmm. So you hold up a pen and you say to yourself, the answer to what this is named is, but you can't call it a pen, anything else but a pen. And at first people go, uh, oh, what? Huh? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, it's a, like, I want to say pen. No, yeah. you can't call it a pen. You call it anything else. And then you realize any other freaking word of a noun, it's a writing utensil. It's a odometer. It's a computer. It's a manipulator. It's a I called it Bob. Writer. I called it Bob. You could call it Bob. <laughs> it's a dog. You could call it a dog because it doesn't matter. There's no right answer. No. You're just not well, calling it what it is because you're having your, you're giving your brain an exercise. Yeah. Why can't I call my pen Bob? You can. <laughs> I call <laughs> mine Shirley. <laughs> Bob and Shirley. Those are very old names, Rebecca. Again, we are dating ourselves here. You know, the hall first. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it's exciting. I, 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 I'm I really looking forward to this, you know, for, for our students because I think they're going to gain a lot out of it. But what kind of exercises or games do you think that uh, we could look forward to in a workout? Well, that's going to be based on how many people are there and how much time we are going to spend on that then decides how much time we're spending on warm up. And then we'll do some individual kind of group, like we'll do two people exercises so we'll start with some warm ups that everybody can do at the same time. You know, a rant is one of those. We'll pick a topic. Let's call mm-hmm. it taxes. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> and then I'll use the timer and I'll say go. And everybody just rants and moans and complains or <laughs> joyously talks about taxes. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going one at a time or no, in unison? Oh, <laughs> no, this is all in unison because it's not important for everyone to hear you. It's important ah. in this moment for you to just rant. And just get it out and talk about that subject and let yourself go and think about the taxes and think about what you like and think about what you hate and think about mm, yeah. why your government needs that money. No, I don't know. So <laughs> just doing right, it. Right, right, right. And it's just Interesting. a matter of letting yourself go there. And then we'll play different games um, that are going to be based on playing with emotion, you know, mm-hmm. playing around with character It depends on the group that we collect, you know, uh, and what they're interested in, too. And you'll like we've done in the past. You've told me a a little bit about who is coming. And I like to make it more customized to who's there. Yeah, Uh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, um, you know, people wonder, well, can you use improv in, you know, things outside of commercials? Because that's where a lot of people somehow hear about improv probably from somebody that's coaching them saying go get some improv loosen up a little bit Mm -hmm. Um, and people wonder about the longer forms of uh, e-learning or audio books Um, what else is long form documentary and then short form super short form promos and can Mm -hmm. you use improv in those well I'll say yes and no it depends so for Mm -hmm. super short form like promos We're Mm -hmm. talking, you know, interstitials that are promoting the next show coming up or what's on tomorrow night or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you pretty much aren't using improv in those. (laughs) Right. It's scripted. (laughs) Well, they're they're script. No, we're not. We work with scripts anyway. We we improv around scripts. Mm -hmm. You're not really. I mean, you you can create a relationship. You know, the idea is who is that other person you're in the scene with? Right. Mm -hmm. So who are you talking to? Why is it important? And where are you? And so gotcha. that would in, that would inform you as to how you're speaking and what the ambiance is and the place that you're at and the priority for you to get those words out. Um, and promo is just such a, what would you say? It's like a style. Mm-hmm. Certain channels have their style or their signature sound. So you just really yeah. don't have a lot of room to play. You just need to deliver. And they're really fast. And so... Y- you know, it's um, it's very stylistic. It's more like saying um, you just don't get to play in those. You just need to deliver a certain way and you're done. The, o- the only thing that I've had the benefit of when it comes to promos is when yeah. I was voicing for HSN because they had so many different types of shows. I was uh-huh. able to change my read. I mean, they That's still, yeah. I, yeah, I was able to, you know, I had to stay true to <clears throat> what the network wanted. But by the same token, if I was doing a luxury, you know, they were going to be having a show, Mary J. Blige brought out a new perfume. Then I had to change my promo read to reflect that. Or, you know, Brett Michaels with a guitar, I had to change my read nice. to reflect that. There you and go. So, so that you was even cool. found a way to, pr- to uh, improv within promos because yeah. here's the deal. As voice actors, okay, we're not readers, we are actors. And if you're learning, you know, you need to aim that direction because you want to be flexible enough, like an actor is, to be able to create a mood or an emotion and evoke something from, in our case, the listener, whether Mm -hmm. it's paired with video or not. So that's the idea. And what a lot of experts in the field would say, and we're talking about casting directors, agents, coaches, people know that what you want is to be you. You want to have your personality because that's what's giving you your stamp of something different, right? Right. That's your Mm -hmm. fingerprint. That's your signature. They call it your signature sound. Um, Like, you know, that's where your individuality comes through. 
but if you don't, if you don't know how, how to do that, um, you might just do something that you think it's supposed to sound like. And right. Which improv- I think is what people normally do. Right. So what I found for me with using improv is it helps you keep in touch with how you like to play, how you like to be, how you interpret things and how you envision situations to help put you in the mindset of why you'd say the things that are written for you to say. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, that makes sense. So it's it's acting. It's just using a, a play, a method of play to get into the acting space. And it's super more fun. I studied at the Meisner. I forget what they call it now. It's uh, the Meisner School, I think, is what it was just called in Hollywood. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I was living there. They had a two year program. I did about a year. And um, that was hard work. I mean, it was like a labor of love. Sounds it's hard. Enjoyable, but it was hard. <laughs> I did acting. I went to another studio when, and went with them until I left Hollywood pretty much. And um, it was just an acting studio where they're, you know, you're working scripts, you're breaking them down. These are longer form for like television stuff, but uh-huh. some concepts are in all of it, whether it's short form like commercials and uh, longer like, you know, explainers or narrative pieces or even longer like television and documentary and stuff. And the, the same basic principles apply is who are you talking to and, right. and who are they to you, you know? How important are they? And the idea is you're not talking to a stranger. You, you want to. So improv helps you play in that space. At least it did for me. And, you know, Tina Fey and uh, uh, who's the blonde in um, Amy Poehler, Parks and Rec, Amy Poehler. Mm-hmm. You know, I just those guys were like my icons and are like my icons still in the sense of they used improv to become better actors. And, yes. you know, I don't know that this is just giving you a sense of what Amy Poehler thought about it and how important it was for her. But she was like, going to improv was like going to church for her. So, you hmm. know, obviously people who go to church would see that as, you know, a bit too much. But, <laughs> but yeah. for her, it was more something like, hey, you know, this is where I'm getting some life, you know, and some sustenance. And in that sense, I can see the relationship between that and church because, you know, you're basically going somewhere where you can fill up and not feel downtrodden upon, hopefully. So improv, that's the idea. Like, you don't want to go and feel like you're in a military school when you go to improv school. You want to feel like you're learning in a supportive environment. Yeah, Yeah. supportive and playful. I mean, somebody who's who's guiding you and coaching you to play because that's what we want to do. We want to have fun. And sometimes it's, you know, you take these skills and you apply them, you know, to every different right. job. And they're not always super fun and super playful. It's not like that. That's super <laughs> fake. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you just want to use it as you can and everywhere that you can. And and so, yeah, when I come to work with your group in June, I will talk to you in advance and know how many people are coming. And we'll have a 90 minute playtime. With, uh, with uh, some script and some not script. And we'll play around with the notions of improv because that's really just a, a little dabble. Of, So here's a, uh, do you have any recommended tips on, you know, handling brain freeze when your brain just is like cannot access something creative? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I think you just uh, give yourself a break. You're probably struggling for some reason and what you need to do is just acknowledge your struggle. And so you kind of stay in that moment. You say, Ugh. you know, you can give a groan, mm-hmm. you can do a, an exertion sound, but more of an emotional exertion sound, not mm-hmm. a physical exertion sound. And that will create some sort of response. I'm talking when you're in a scene, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, I have it sometimes some students will have trouble because I'll have them trying to loosen up, you know, while they're reading a commercial, let's say a commercial piece of copy. And I'll just say, why don't we just try it a different way? Why don't you try a different, just just attack it a different way? You know, I I kind of keep it open ended for them. That's going on is say, okay, I want you to read this in like the worst possible way. Like just, just, just (laughs) read it in the worst fake or silly or ridiculous way. Uh Uh-huh. That's fun. And that's good. You know, but just tell them you are in, you know, tell them, imagine where they are and Mm. 
what's your environment smell like? What are you hearing in the background? Mm-hmm. You know, imagine your environment. Try if they're a visual person or an audio. Like, what are your five senses? See, hear, smell, touch, taste. So use any of those five. The four, aside from taste, are the easiest ones, especially mm-hmm. visual, audio, and um, smell. Those guys are strong emotional triggers for us. So yeah, what do they smell? Do they do they want to be happy? What do you smell? Cotton candy? Ooh. Mm. Um, can you imagine tasting it right now? Oh my God, my mouth is watering. So you know, it depends on on the scene. And if it's really dry material, then that's the best way to try to spice it up. Like, who are you? Are you a super intelligent scientist? Yeah. And are you in your um scientific uh laboratory? Are you in your laboratory or are you in a presentation in front of other super smart scientists, but you're unveiling something that they did not know that you've discovered? You know? ah, uh-huh. <laughs> it really so depends. Yeah. I mean, the, the way of just playing opposite to whatever they're doing right now and not creating a space for it is one way to just shake something off. And that's, that's not great. so much improv related, but it is a way to play, you know, and mm-hmm. try to get out of the nerves or the deer in the headlights thing. Um, I just know that some students have that struggle, especially with improv, that suddenly will just like, they'll freeze. Well, and then yeah. They can't, you know, yeah. and in that they can't case, access. what you can do is the mantra of improv. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> in that case, you know, you might not know what to say after the end. So you can just breathe and make maybe an audible breath and let uh-huh. your scene partner come in and, and, and work with you. And, you know, just go slower. Take your time. Don't force yourself. The hardest thing in some of those cases is they're thinking they have to be funny. They've got some um, right tape rolling in the back of their head about what's wrong with what they're going to do so they don't do anything because they right. don't trust their instincts. And you have to keep practicing and playing. And it's so important at that in those moments to play and play easily, play gently or or, or just play boldly, you know. Most mm-hmm. of those people, though, just need a little bit of a nudge. and To get out of that. And they'll start dipping the toe. And then the, then it becomes much easier. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of people that are more uptight, like a, you know, like a real tight, you know, nut. Like, you know, like it's hard to crack the shell. And then there are people who just need a little nudge and they bloom like a flower. So everybody's yeah. different. There's this no one really way. Cool. So I like the fact, too, that because you are a voice actor yourself and you've been doing this for so long, it's like your workouts truly are tailored for yeah. voice actors, Oh yeah, um, which is what makes it so much fun, because this is this is stuff you'll be able to immediately apply um, yes. in your day to day work. You know, yeah. so, you know, if you've yeah. ever thought about doing any kind of improv and maybe it's not in your area or you don't want to do something in person, this is definitely something you're going to want to join us for on June 13th, Definitely. 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, 1 because p.m. Eastern. It'll be so much fun. It will be so much fun. And uh, and if it's not so much fun, it'll be enjoyable. Right. You'll learn something. <laughs> you might come with a little bit of trepidation or just come to say, I'm going to goof off and feel this feeling in my studio. Because, right. you know, how many places are you doing that with improv? Yeah, it's true. It's true. I'm excited. I'm glad that you're going to be doing I know you've been so busy. We haven't been able to do it in a while. Cause it's been a few years. I just can't since- believe that. <laughs> I know. I, it's my 10th anniversary. 10 wow. years doing improv with voiceover. It That's was called great. Love That Improv VO. And now I've changed it up for the 10th anniversary. I redid the um, logo and it's just VO Improv. Because everybody was trying to figure out, how do I say that? Love That improv Yes. <laughs> I was like, um, am I missing an O? It's just, Should you know, there be an O? Stupid. No, it's it's but great. I, the fact I, that you got <laughs> voimprov.com is fantastic. Yep. 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 You know, because yeah. uh, I would imagine that URL would have been taken. Yeah, by me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank yeah, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. There was so one it, I wanted that I couldn't get, but um, it's all right. You know who Keith Johnstone is? No. He's a... Uh, pretty high up there and um he wrote a, several good books and he called it improv o improvo improvo like okay he called improv <laughs> instead of saying improv in the short he called it improvo 
or something like that. And I was like, I got to get that URL because <laughs> I love <laughs> Keith Johnstone. And it was not. What does Keith know. Johnstone do? Oh, he writes about improv. He's he's done the he's led improv for a long time. Ah. I, I am totally I see the book because my book of his is like a two inch thick book it, it, from I'm imagining it in my hand right now. Um, and I think it's just called Improv Improvo. <laughs> let me see hang on you know i'm totally blanking out because uh i haven't been thinking about provo him. but uh yeah he's a teacher of improv i mean he's run that's cool yeah he's like a he where's he, he based out of he uk he's from the uk oh Rich okay. canadian it says i'm reading it on the online uh search yeah he um He's written some great books. I guess he just passed away in March. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, learning something he invented, new. <laughs> he invented theater sports. That's how, I, that's how I learned improv in San Francisco, through theater sports. That's like a way of doing, like I'm doing VO improv, and I'm doing it in audio only and with voice actors only from their home studios. Well, he right. did theater sports where he made it like games, too, because he felt like there are some people who are doing this in the wrong way, and I don't agree with them. And um, he created theater sports, which became a real big thing in, in certain circles, in certain cities, and that sort of thing. Um, were there when acting out sports without being together? Like they're no, doing no, it? No, no, it's just called sports because oh. it's like, you know, you're an improv athlete. It's not like you're doing oh. it in sports. <laughs> like, yeah. Are they improvising playing baseball? What are they doing? No, no, he just <laughs> called it that because it was more like get up there and play and come on back. It's like, you know, get out gotcha. there and hit the ball and come on back. It's, it was more like that. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So now your regular workouts that you do, what do you, you still hold the ones that people can drop in on or they buy a package of them? How does that work? Good question. Um, by the way, but before I get into that, <laughs> Keith Johnstone Impro, that's what he called it, Impro. Instead, Without the V? And I wanted the Improvo because Impro from Keith Johnstone and then VO and it just didn't work out. So I changed it yeah, okay. to the Impro now. <laughs> I think what you have now is much clearer. <laughs> much clearer. So easier verbally anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So the question was about the workouts and do I have drop-ins and stuff like that. So the workouts are bought in monthly packages and you can buy a drop-in, but I really encourage through the pricing for you to buy a month. Because I'd hate for you to come and it'd be an off day and there are a few people instead of 10, you know, we have yeah. 13 or so people in one workout. And I want you to have a good time. And I also want you to get an experience with the group because group dynamics, when somebody's new, you know, d depends on the person. So, But I just want you to have a good time and I want you to feel it. And week one is always about the basic skills. Week two is always about scene work. And week three is always about scripts. So depending on when you drop in, you might not get one of the others. So ah, a month okay. would give you a full impact. Now, you can buy a package of three months. You can buy one month. You can drop in. And for those alumni, now this is going to be brand new. It's not even on the website yet. But for those, by, by the time somebody hears this, it might be. For those that are alumni of either the uh, the 101 course, the training wheels course, or um, have been in the workouts in the past, I am creating a drop in that will start as soon as I can get it up on the website. I Great. have a virtual assistant that's going to do that for me. So there'll be a lower rate for alumni or comebacks. And um, then there's a, a higher rate for somebody we haven't played with before because we just don't know what their skill level is. And we want to make sure we're, um, you know, vetting people essentially. That's a good fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That makes so sense. It's, it's very fun. And like I said, I do the class twice a year and I'm looking to do some more things. Um, coming up very soon, actually. I'm not going to announce it yet because it's in the discussion phases, but I've got a, a new class or two that might be coming out and cool. a special voiceover scripts to, with improv workouts specifically just on that topic. 
Ah, very nice. Yeah. Well, stuff to look forward to. Yeah. But in the meantime, June 13th, baby, we are going to yeah. be having some fun. We are. <laughs> so you have to make sure you join us for that. It is already posted on our website. If you go to voiceover.guru, we have it on our online workout section. You can just scroll down and you'll see right there. We've got some fun uh, VO improv with Rebecca Hall. And um, join us for the 90-minute session. I, I, I promise you, you are going to gain so much from it. You're going to be like, why have I never tried this before? Oh, yeah, for You're sure. You're going to walk away and say, I should have never held back on this because this is a blast. And if you already know it's good, having done it from your studio in front of your mic will make you realize how you need to keep doing it that way, too. <laughs> yep, exactly. It's yeah. the best, yeah. And uh, yeah. it all has to be practiced anyway, which you can do in your day-to-day -day life if you really oh, exactly. get creative. Sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, come down and, and have fun with us for that. Hats off for to that all afternoon. parents for that, too, because they're playing <laughs> improv usually with their kids in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> That's true. That's a great way. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Rebecca. It was always a pleasure to chat with you. A pleasure to be here have you on the podcast and again folks just head over voiceover.guru go to online workout sign up and join us for june 13th because this is not a workout that happens frequently so you want to get in on right. this plus it's during that, the day i love that url voiceover.guru yeah i've had it for so long too everybody's like dot guru I mean, yeah like no com it's dot guru <laughs> that's so cool i love that keeps it simple but everybody usually our workouts are in the evening so this is a good one for those of you that can't make it at night because yeah. this is right in the middle of the day for okay. eastern time zone forks make yes. your afternoon even sunnier <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> thank you, thank you again all right everybody we'll see you real soon Ciao. Thanks for listening to the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Real talk about the voiceover industry. Learn more about us and get coaching at voiceover.guru.